whatever choice you make, you are right. Anything you choose to do, it's good. God is not in the business of arguing with human beings. He will teach you if you are willing to learn. But if you are not willing to learn, he's not going to impose anything on you. That's just not the way it works. I believe it's um, John chapter 12, verse 47. Hold on a second. Let me find it. Yeah, here we are. I actually, I'm actually happy that I found it precisely. It's John chapter 12, verses 47 and 48. Listen very carefully to what Jesus says here. He says, And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejected me, we're talking about verse 48 now. He that rejected me and receiveth not my words, hath one that judgeth him. The words that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. See, when the time is right, judgment will come. Remember the parable that Jesus spoke about, you know, when a man slept, the enemy came and planted tares among the wheat. Among the wheat. And so, the, so his, uh, his servants, his stewards, his people, his, his servants came and told him, let's, 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 remove these, let's remove the tares. And I was like, no, let them grow together. When the time comes, we are going to harvest everything together and then we are going to separate them. You need to understand the way God thinks. Many times God does not judge us on the spot. As a matter of fact, what I have found is there are two extremes, although, although it's not, don't, don't take it to the bank, it's not necessarily you know, exactly like that. You see, I am not God. I'm not going to call the shots for God, but something I have observed. You see, when you are very close to God, when you're very when, you, when your relationship with God is on point, God has the tendency of judging you very harshly. You know, for example, Moses, when he struck the rock rather than speak to the rock, God simply told him, Forget about it. Even though Moses prayed, God told him, Forget about it, you're not entering the promised land. Um, when David uh, killed Raya and took his wife. You know, God judged him and told him he would die. Then he pleaded. And then God said, okay, you're not going to die, but the sword is not going to depart from your house. Basically, uh, remember, but uh, because you have, he said, said, because you have given occasion for the enemies of God to talk. Basically saying that because you have this kind of relationship with me, people can talk because of that. So I have to deal with you. And God dealt with him. His family basically ripped itself apart. So what am I trying to say? The closer you are to God, there's a tendency for God to deal with you very harshly. And uh, Hebrews chapter 12 goes into talking about, you know, whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. There are also some people who I believe that um, perhaps maybe they, their sins are extreme. You know, for whatever reason, God decides to judge them very harshly. Uh, we see the case of Herod after, I mean, after the death and ascension, death, resurrection and ascension of Jesus Christ, when he was speaking and people were telling him, wow, you are speaking like a God. And he got proud. And God decided to choose that moment to judge him harshly. And, you know, the Bible says, my, my, my parents will put it this way. In other words, the angel of the Lord slapped him and worms ate him and he died. God chose to use that moment as a teachable moment. So, um, nobody can say categorically that this is how God judges or not. Nobody can say, but he has said this. The words that I have given you, they are the ones that are going to judge you in the end. So, if you accept those words, good for you. If you don't accept them, good for you. Whatever choice you make, the benefits or consequences will come after that. The problem we have is that we have this mentality that, you know, we can argue with God based on how we feel, based on what we want. And the Bible tells us very clearly in James chapter 4, say, where are all these wars? Where are all these fightings coming from? Are they not coming out from inside you? I'd love to read it verbatim. Hold on a second. I'll read from verse 1 to verse 3. James chapter 4. 
Here we are. It says, say, from whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even out of your lusts, the things that you want, that war in your members. Ye lust, that is, you desire things, you want it so much, and you don't have it. So you kill, and you are still desiring to have, and you cannot obtain it. Then you fight and you war, yet you still do not have it because you are not asking. And then even when you are asking, you are not getting it because you are asking for the wrong reasons. It says you ask and receive not because you ask and miss, that ye may consume it upon your lusts. Listen, all the fighting and unrest in the world is coming from one place and one place only. Selfishness, lusts. I want this, I want this, I want this. And where we are missing it is that, he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Not when and how you want it, but when he believes you are ready to receive it. Um, the Bible says, Jesus said, he said, he said uh, oh goodness, he's running away, he's running away. <laughs> Who is going to give you that which is much when you have not been faithful in that which is little? And who is going to give you your own when you have not been faithful in another man's own? You have to understand, God has a process for preparing us to receive what he wants us to have. The problem is, we do not want to go through God's process. We want to have it now, the way we want it, when we want it, how we want it. I want my wife to be this kind of person, but you're not willing to pay the price. Then that takes me to uh, Proverbs 31, where most of us think that the Bible is talking about the virtuous woman and talking to women. Yes, the Bible is talking to women, but the address is to men. It says, my son, hearken unto the voice of your wife. Don't give your strength unto women. And then he starts by saying, can you pay the price to have this kind of woman? Because it's more than money. Then he describes the woman. So yes, women, you should aspire to be that. But men, you should aspire to pay the price to get that kind of woman. Jesus paid that price with his very life. And he tells us as men, that is what we are supposed to do. Love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. If you cannot give yourself for your woman, there's a limit to how much you can achieve. Yes, it's not talking about whether she's a good woman or not. It's about you being the right kind of man. Likewise, women, you have to understand, the Bible doesn't say that your husband has to be perfect. As a matter of fact, it literally says, when he does not obey the word, you are supposed to still submit to him. So, now, you can argue with God. God will not argue with you. If you make the right decision, you will get the right results. If you don't make those decisions, you will not get the results he promises. And the funny thing is that the Bible says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So, you think you are smart in your own eyes. You are trying to reinvent the wheel. You are trying to say things that the Bible does not say because it's comfortable or convenient or because it's popular or because somebody did it and it seemed to work for them. So, you want the same thing also for yourself. You start insisting on things in your life that God has not recommended for you. It's not in the Bible. It's not in the Word of God. It's not... The Holy Spirit did not say it to you, but you are convinced you are right and you want to do it by force. God will not argue with you. When the time comes, the results will come. So whatever decision you choose to make, you are right. The Bible says, be it unto you according to your faith. As it thinketh in his heart, so is he. What will not change, however, is the word of God. And you know why I love the word of God? It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I know there are many new versions of the Bible that are coming out every day, and some of those words are being gradually and carefully changed. And that's one of the reasons why I hold on fervently to the KJV, to the King James Version, because, well, the language is not softened. It's not always easy to understand, and yes, the other Bibles help to understand sometimes, but if you are focused on the Holy Spirit, you will find Him, and He will be able to teach you. So you shall seek Me and find Me when you shall seek Him with all your heart. So, um... You want to be careful with the kind of Bible we use because some of those Bibles, sometimes the language just <laughs> it takes it away completely. But God can still teach you. Use any Bible as long as it's available to you and you're focused on finding God. What am I saying? Um, lean on the Word of God. Do what the Word of God tells you to do. Live your life like that. It doesn't have to be convenient. God was not trying to make it convenient. God was not trying to make it easy for you to understand. God was trying to lead you. God is trying to lead you to himself. 
Okay, it's not about money. Money comes and goes. It's about him. Focus on him. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. His righteousness being knowledge of him, relationship with him, understanding his word, accepting it and acting based on it. That's what righteousness is. It's not even your righteousness. He's the one who does it. You just lean on him. And then these things will be added unto you when he thinks it's time. The alternative is you can decide to start arguing with God and telling him, this is how I want it. This is what I want. And insisting. Sometimes he will give it to you. Sometimes he won't, depending on how, what he's trying to do with your life. But I tell you, I assure you, it's in your best interest to listen to what God is trying to do. He's trying to tell you and to obey so that you can get to where you want to get to. Because that is genuine prosperity. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. God bless you. Uh, like, subscribe, comment if you see me. Have a wonderful day.